I spent a lot of my life just trying to get through it. I remember back in 2001 when my second son was born, he cried a lot, and by a lot I mean all day long. My beautiful baby just cried and cried, and I'd wake up in the morning, and the first conscious thought that I'd have every morning was that I just needed to make it through the day. And so I'd break my day into 15-minute increments. I knew I could get through just 15 minutes. And when those 15 minutes were up, my clock would reset, and I'd go just 15 more minutes, and so on throughout the day until I'd gotten through my day 15 minutes at a time. My beautiful little baby and his older brother, who was also still a baby, would finally be asleep. And I could at last lay down for a few hours until I woke again when my 15-minute interval day started all over. And this is how I lived nine months of my life back in 2001. And my son outgrew his crying, and he became an incredibly wonderful boy. But I did not outgrow my mindset. I was stuck in this limbo of simply surviving my life. I was so caught up in my day-to-day -day grind that I just went through the motions, passing each today while dreaming of tomorrow. This was nothing new to me. I remember as a kid just trying to make it through the marking period to winter break, to summer vacation, just a few more days until my pimple goes away, or a few more months until I'm not so awkward anymore. In college, oh, I loved college, but it will be better after I make it through this class that I really don't like. Also, I'm excited for spring break and my study abroad. I can't wait for that. That study abroad was awful. Then I just tried to make it through the semester so I could come home again. When I started my job, I was just making it through the week until Friday, which is surprising when I think about it, because I loved my job, but I guess I loved Friday nights more. I was making it until payday, until my promotion, because I was excited for that promotion. I married the most incredible man, and then I couldn't wait until we could buy a house together, because then my life could really start. He told me that once we had a house, then we could have a baby and I wanted that baby so badly. So I waited for the house, and then I waited for the baby, our beautiful firstborn son. And then I waited for a second, our second beautiful boy, and a third, our perfect baby girl. And so I passed my life dreaming dreams. I knew I could make it to the next dream. I was one of the fortunate ones who worked really hard, but also had a bit of luck. So I kept reaching my dreams. But as I reached the next and the next milestone, the house, the family, the promotion, the office, I never stopped to appreciate how far I'd come or what I'd accomplished. I just came up with the next dream to dream. I just needed one more thing, just one more experience. And the days became months, and the months became years. And all of a sudden, I'm 46 years old, still dreaming my life away. My friend and I, for kicks, we went to a psychic once. This psychic told me I had a golden aura. I literally walked in the room, and he looked at me with these wide eyes and said I had a golden aura. I asked him what he meant by that. And his exact words were, very technical here, so pay attention, you step in shit, it turns to gold. I could understand that because I knew I was living this wonderful and blessed life with an incredible husband and these three amazing kids in this gigantic career. But to me, my aura felt like fool's gold. You see, to me, today was just a holding day until tomorrow. Tomorrow was my day. Tomorrow I'll shine. I'm not so good today, but you just wait and see what I can be tomorrow. In February of last year, my biggest and craziest dream was finally going to be realized. It was something that I truly never thought I'd cross off my bucket list. You see, for 16 years, I'd been applying to play Survivor. I'm sure many of you know the game. It's one of the most popular reality TV shows ever created. 18 or so strangers marooned on an island, forced to live together, but also to compete against each other, voting each other out of the game one by one over 39 days until there is just one sole survivor who has outwitted, outplayed, and outlasted all the rest. And this sole survivor wins a million dollars. And in February of last year, I got that call that changed my life. I had been invited to play Survivor. Finally, I would have my day. And that morning last April, on a ship in the Fijian Sea, when my Survivor game began, it was the first time in a long time that I wasn't dreaming of tomorrow. Instead, at that moment, I simply wanted time to stop. But of course it didn't. It went on as time does. 
I remember jumping overboard and swimming to the rowboat and eventually landing on our beach with the other people on my team. In Survivor, teams are called tribes. And finding out that my tribe of heroes included an NFL player, a firefighter, an Olympian, a Marine, and ocean rescue. I was an actuary and a mom, and I honestly had no idea why I was there. <laughs> They had no idea why I was there either. They labeled me Mom Squad and decided to vote me out as soon as we lost a challenge. But I put on a mask of confidence and pretended I felt good about today. I pretended I belonged on this tribe of heroes. But inside, I just felt like my aura was fool's gold. And I knew if I could just make it till tomorrow, then tomorrow they'll like me. Tomorrow is my day. That first day, I was so hungry and scared, but I, I knew that after getting a good sleep, my stomach would have grown tired of growling, and I'd feel less like an outsider. The first night came, and I remember I couldn't really sleep after all. All my years I spent watching Survivor, I never realized that sleeping in a bamboo shelter felt like sleeping on jagged concrete. Fiji was hot in the day, but it was chilly at night. So that first night, instead of getting that good sleep, instead I lay there, cold and hungry, on jagged concrete, and I watched the moon move across the sky, slowly moving across the sky. I just lay there, waiting for morning. By morning, neither my hunger nor my exhaustion had subsided. But I knew that I'd feel better the next day. Tomorrow, I'll learn how to sleep in our shelter. My stomach will stop growling, and these young people will like me, because tomorrow is my day. By day three, we were at our first Survivor Challenge. I had waited 16 years to compete in a Survivor Challenge, but instead of being excited, I was terrified. On day three, when we were running that challenge, my tribe competing against the other two tribes, I just wanted it to be over because, you see, I'm not so good at this one. It's the next one I can do. I was so afraid I actually threw up. That was awful. My tribe ended up losing that first challenge, so now we had to vote someone from our tribe out of the game. I just needed to make it a few more hours past this first vote. And I did, and my game went on. I got through each day, waiting for one small meal, waiting for the challenge, waiting for nighttime so I could lay my head down and watch the moon move across the sky. I was living out my dream as I lived my life, just waiting. One more day, one more challenge, one more vote, not recognizing that I was living my dream today. And all the while, I pretended I was confident, so confident, but inside I knew my aura was just fool's gold today. Then on day 22, after more than three weeks of waiting, I had a moment that literally changed my life. This moment was so brief, it didn't even make the edit. There was a water challenge. This time, we were competing for a feast on a yacht. And I had to swim individually against a Marine who was more than a decade younger than I was. And I was absolutely freaking out on that dock before it started because I was 46 years old and not a swimmer. And today is not my day. Tomorrow is my day. But there was no way to fake this one. And I'm absolutely freaking out on that dock when the hero firefighter looked me straight in the eye and very calmly said, Chrissy, just hold your mask, dive in, and swim your little heart out. And in that simple phrase, just dive in and swim your little heart out, my whole world skipped for a moment. It was like I woke up and I realized that whatever I was, that was enough. However I did, that was okay. I didn't have to wait for tomorrow. My time was now. And so, in that moment, I just dove in, and I swam my little heart out. I swam to the dock, and I climbed up the giant ladder, and I jumped into the ocean below, and I swam to the buoy, and I dove underwater, and I untied the keys. And when I came up for air, the doctor was screaming, Chrissy, you're winning. Chrissy, you're winning. And yes, I won my swimming leg. And our team won the feast on the yacht that day. That moment was a turning point in my game, when my game of tomorrows became a game of today's. When I finally felt like enough, then I was. It didn't always go my way. Of course, there were plenty of times that I found myself on the outside of a vote or the outside of an alliance, but I managed to get myself to the end, to day 39, 
by living each day for today, joyfully and gratefully. And that day after I learned when I could just dive in and swim my little heart out, I went on to win four individual immunity challenges, four. I tied a record for the most individual immunity wins by a woman in survivor history. I was 46. The next oldest person to do that was 29. The beauty of today showed itself not only during the challenges, but also during the simple and quiet moments of just surviving on that island in Fiji. I remember one moment in the early morning hours of day 35. The surfer and I had won an overnight reward. We brought the bellhop with us. The three of us, the actuary, the surfer, and the bellhop, we slept that night not on the concrete bamboo, but in a giant comfortable bed at a resort on a private island. Truthfully, we didn't really sleep. We brought these giant heaping plates of food in bed with us, and we power ate until we were practically sick. And then we'd nap and digest for an hour or so and wake up again to eat some more. And all the while, we laughed and we laughed at real laughs. I truly loved them. I finally belonged. At one point in the night, I woke up. It was probably about 2 AM. I have no idea. I hadn't seen a watch or a clock in over a month. I was no longer living that life of 15-minute interval days. I got up quietly in the night, and I went outside to look at the stars. Those Fiji stars were incredible. That night, I wasn't tracking the moon as it moved across the sky. I was just enjoying the stillness of the stars. The surfer woke up too, and he came out to me, and we embraced. And that was the moment that I cemented a final three deal with him. And I remember that moment so vividly, because at 2 AM or so, I was enjoying the still and the now. Of course, that final three didn't happen. When only four players were left, the surfer was eliminated in a surprise sudden death challenge with the Marine. And the Marine went on to win the game. I came in second. And sometimes now, people will tell me that they are so disappointed that I lost the game. They are so disappointed that I lost. But you know, I don't view it that way. Because when I was out there on that island, living on nothing, stripped of every regular comfort, without my family, without clean water in which to wash, without regular meals or privacy, electricity or technology, when all of those things were taken from me and I was forced to just survive, that's when I realized that I could do more than just survive. I could thrive. In my case, thriving did not mean winning survivor. Thriving meant living my todays without always needing more, living with thankfulness and gratitude and joy and peace and acceptance and feeling like I was enough. Yes, planning and preparing for tomorrow, but fully enjoying the beauty of today. Outside, out on that island, I finally found my 24-karat golden aura. I may not have one survivor, but I am proud of my game, and I am insanely thankful for simply having the opportunity to play. Do not be disappointed. I did not lose. Six weeks after returning home from Fiji, my son, the same boy who had cried and cried back in 2001, left for a sur summer service trip to Australia. He was now 16 years old. And one night, the phone rang in the middle of the night. It was my son calling from Australia, asking permission to go skydiving. And every ounce of my maternal being wanted to say, no, not now, too scary but I want to raise my children to embrace their todays. So yes, I said, have fun, my love. Call me when you land. <laughs> and during his 15-minute jump, he again cried out, but this time it was shrieks of joy and love and living and thankfulness for the now. As for me, of course, the show somewhat forced on me that old waiting game. In some sense, I found myself waiting for the premiere, waiting for Wednesdays, waiting for the finale, when I would finally find out whether I'd placed first or second or third. But this time, it was a different kind of waiting. Because while I was waiting, I was living, living a joyful life of today's with my family and feeling like I was enough. I now know that success and achievement are not the same as happiness. People ask me all the time if I would ever play Survivor again. Yes, no, maybe. I'll think about it if they ever ask me, I guess. But for now, I don't want to live a distracted life, dreaming of that next call or the next thing that I think I need to make me whole. 
because now I'm not just surviving my life, I'm thriving. And I know now that whatever I am doing, no matter how important or insignificant, I know that today is my day. Thank you.